So hello, this is uh, Kerry Harling, CEO and founder of The Holistic Highway. And I wanted to jump on this call today and introduce you to Pamela Tracy. Um, Pamela is special. She's been with me for about a year now and oh, coming up two years, I think, in our second year together. And Pamela um, is an expert in essential oil. So she brings a lot of good things with her as I've worked with her over this last year. And she's actually taught me a lot about essential oils too. So Pamela, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you even got into essential oils in the first place. So I started using essential oils about six years ago. I had an interest in uh, some natural things, natural solutions. I was having a lot of, uh, a lot of anxiety. I was having a lot of head tension. I had spoken to a doctor about my problems with my head tension, and he had suggested a $50 pill that was not covered by insurance. And so instead, I started using some essential oil blends, and they relieved the tension that over-the-counter medication could not relieve, and it was much less expensive than a $50 pill. So that started it, and it just kind of grew from there. Um, so for the past six years, I've just been learning more and more about them and using them more and sharing information about them. Terrific. And now you have your own company, The Balanced Life, and, and we'll definitely let people know how to get a hold of you. But um, essential oils have many benefits, and I use them a lot of, in our products too, as well you know. But, but what are they and how do they work? Right, so essential oils are the essence of a plant. They're distilled and prepared to bring the power of nature into your home, basically. Hidden inside plants in the roots and seeds, flowers and bark are concentrated, highly potent, naturally occurring chemical compounds. And these are essential oils. Essential oils are what give the plants their scents. They protect them from hazardous environmental conditions and they even assist with pollination among other important functions and benefits. So essential oils for us can be used aromatically, they can be used topically, they can be used internally to allow entry into the body. And every essential oil varies in its natural makeup. So the aromas and benefits are unique. For example, lavender uh, can be effective for soothing minor skin irritations, reducing anxiousness, feelings of tension, promoting a restful sleep environment, while frankincense can support the immune, the nervous, the digestive system. Yeah, that's great. I'm using a lot of frankincense and a lot of my um, spring dosha kit. So uh, a lot of the sort of oral swish and the nasty oil has frankincense because it had such good qualities. But how do you know, Pam, which oils are the best? Because you know, I can go online and every single person tells me theirs is the best oil and theirs is therapeutic and theirs is organic and sustainably harvested. I mean, outside of sort of the big jumbo ones that we know of, how do you know which ones are good? What makes them good? That is a great question, Carrie, and you're right. People talk about the sustainable and responsible sourcing, and that is very important, although it's very hard for us to see it. Um, if you go online to some of these companies, a lot of them will actually have the videos of where their oils come from, because the quality and the purity of the oil are affected by where the plant is grown, and it's best to have them grown indigenously, where they originate from. And it's also about the harvesting. And it's not just the time of year, but in some cases, it's the time of day when they're harvested and then how they're extracted. So that's another thing. On the company's websites, they should tell you how each oil is extracted because there are different processes that are most beneficial for different oils. So that's first. Second is extensive and thorough testing. Do they test their oils for adulteration and contamination? And do they not just test them internally, but do they go to third parties? So if they go to a third party for testing, that third party will provide a label called CPTG, which is Certified Pure 
therapeutic grade. And that's when you know you're getting a pure oil if it has that label. Now, the most conscientious companies will not even stop there with that labeling. Each individual bottle of oil will have an, a quality ID number on it. And if you go to their website, they will provide you or in, in the information on the bottle, there will be a website that you can go to, to that third party, and you can type in that ID number and they will give you the results of the quality testing for that specific batch, not just in general, but that specific batch of essential oil. So those are the things that you really wanna look for for quality. And then there are other things such as, I feel it's very important for the support, such as clear and accessible safety and usage information that's provided. And also, does the company invest in research and testing? Do they collaborate with universities, hospitals, and research facilities to stay on the cutting edge of essential oil science? So that's fascinating. I didn't even know that, that harvesting certain times of the day would make a difference with an essential oil. So, so that's fascinating. And I didn't realize that so much um, sort of safety and research went into it. I just thought, you know, a company would just throw up their essential oils and sell them to you and it's up to you to find out what was best. So I'm glad that there is actually quite a lot of layers to go through. Um, there are. To make sure that it works. So when we use essential oils, and let's get into sort of the practical use of them, because that's what everybody's really interested in, is, is what is the best way to use them? Do we diffuse them? I mean, I've, I've read that you shouldn't necessarily put them directly on your skin. Um, do we take them internally? I mean, what is the best way to use them? So that really depends upon your objective. So the aromatic diffusing them, it's one of the simplest and most effective ways to use the essential oil when you wanna positively affect your mood, when you wanna cleanse the air, or when you wanna support the respiratory system. So this method, working through the sense of smell, is a tool that can elicit powerful psychological, mental, and emotional responses. The essential oils are quickly absorbed through your smell receptors and then go to the part of the brain where emotions and memories are stored. So that's why some essential oils will induce uplifting or invigorating effects, while others will provide calming effects. And you can do the aromatic by using a diffuser, but you can also do it as simply as putting a few drops in your palm of your hand, cupping it over your nose and inhaling. And there are various other ways. You can take a spray bottle and spray it with water, you can use uh, rubbing alcohol or witch hazel. I use rubbing alcohol or, or other types of alcohol. If I want to make a pure foam as, a, as opposed to a perfume um, so that I don't have all the toxins of synthetic chemicals. Um, so that's aromatic. And then topical or application to the skin is really most effective for localized benefits since the essential oil easily penetrates the skin. And so my favorite topical are for relieving head tension, neck tension, ear pain, or to promote uh, healing of blemishes or minor burns. And then for internal use or ingesting the essential oils, they would go directly to your bloodstream through your digestive system and then be transported to the rest of your body. So there are a few different effective methods of internal application. You can take the essential oil under the tongue. You can put drops of essential oil in a veggie cap and, and ingest it, or you can add them to drinks or food. So when you're adding them to drinks or food, Carrie, you want to remember that pure essential oils are 50 to 70 times more potent than herbs and that one drop of peppermint is equivalent to 28 cups of peppermint tea wow. so yeah it's Huge. very potent um what i love to do is my morning drink that you gave me my warm water with honey 
I add ginger, lemon, and black pepper essential oils to it, and it's it's wonderful. And and how many drops of each would you put into that though? I put one drop of each. Okay. Okay, so that makes sense. I want to talk a little bit about ingesting oils. It, it's not my wheelhouse, so I don't recommend it. And I've had a lot of controversy. In fact, I actually had a client one time, Pam, who came up to me and she had burnt all her esophagus because somebody had told her to drink cinnamon essential oil. Very, very burning. Um, she trusted this person who was a health practitioner. Um, but so... so it just seems very scary to me and, and a little dangerous if you don't quite know what you're doing. So I always recommend to people, you know, uh, just diffuse it, um, but you're actually talking about ingesting it. Is, is there a good resource that people have or how will they know what to do? Because I'd hate somebody to burn themselves with black pepper essential oil, for example, which I know would be heating. Right, it is heating. Uh, again, I put it in, eight ounces of warm water, just one drop. Um, and I've, I, and I actually, as you know, I have digestion problems. So on a regular basis, every couple of years, I go and I have to have endoscopies. And actually, since I have been using my essential oils and using your guidance in Ayurveda, my my digestive system, my, my digestive tract is in much better condition than it was previously. But you do have to be concerned about hot oils and you do have to make sure about dilution and making sure that you're not using a lot of oil. So things like oregano or thyme, if I use those in a dish that I am making, I will actually take a I will take a toothpick and just dip the toothpick in the essential oil. So it's a very, very minute amount. But essential oils, while they are concentrated, they do come from plants. And to a much smaller extent, we are ingesting essential oils when we are, are eating some plants. So our bodies are designed to metabolize and process these natural compounds, but you do need to take care. Great, good, and that's a good warning there. Um, and then talking about things that are a little bit more scary, what about children? I mean, how, how do we use oil safely in children? Are they a more vulnerable population? Are they likely to sort of metabolize that quicker or do we have to be careful with kids? So with children, first of all, you always want to make sure that essential oil use is, um, is done under adult supervision. You never want the children to be using the essential oils on their own. And because they are smaller, because they do have more sensitive skin, you always want to dilute the essential oils. And there are uh, dilution guides that give you uh, different prorations so that you can make anywhere from a 0.5% to a from a 0.5% to a 5% solution in various size uh, containers. So I definitely recommend that. And I also recommend that if you're going to use it topically with children, that you start on the bottoms of the feet because those are less sensitive areas to work with. Great. That seems to make a lot of sense. And then often people treat essential oils as this sort of big fix it. You know, I'm taking essential oils, they're going to fix everything. Um, and I think there's always a, a sense of danger in that with, with anything, not just essential oils. But would you say essential oils really are better than conventional treatments? So Carrie, what I love about essential oils and those who taught me about them are the same things that I love about you and what you've taught me about Ayurveda because they really are the same principles. But you have to have that sound foundation in respect to diet and exercise, sleep, uh, daily routines, your general lifestyle. But the ideology behind essential oils is the same as using herbs and plants in Ayurveda. Both have been used for thousands of years. And if pharmaceutical companies could patent these herbs and oils, they would. 
but because they can't, they often try to create synthetic compounds that mimic the effects of these natural plants. And I worked for many years in the pharmaceutical and biotech industry. And the scientists and engineers that I worked with, my degree is in chemical engineering, and I worked with researchers and engineers everywhere from research through scale up and production in pharmaceuticals and um, the biotech industries. And often they would warn me about the side effects of the products, especially because at that time I had two young children and I had a son who was always sick and he had already become immune to all antibiotics except for the very strongest antibiotic that existed. So, you know, I look at that, I look at the major crisis in our country today with the opioid epidemic. And the beautiful thing about essential oils is that there are no side effects, there are no addictions. And essential oils do a wonderful job of supporting our systems. Now, due to the FDA regulations, a company or a person selling essential oils can't state that their products are intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent a disease. However, there are many testimonials and a lot of research, and the research is growing because the world today is really looking for natural solutions. Yeah, I think so. And, and I see that a lot. I mean, we're seeing it, I think, in the, in the healthcare industry in general, that the people are getting very tired of just a pill to match the ill and then having the side effects that go with it. Not that medication isn't needed at different times, but if there is a more sort of natural which is often a, a slower way of doing it and a more gentle way of doing it, that then people are often attracted to that. So what would be a good book for beginners? Let's say somebody's listening to us and says, you know, I kind of want to get into essential oils. I've diffused a little bit of lavender, but you know, how do I take this to the next step? What would be a good place for them to start, Pam? Right, so The Essential Life and Modern Essentials are both two very good books. And if your listeners are interested, I would like to offer uh, a free ebook, either the essentials for beginners or 100 uses for essential oils. All they need to do is text me their name and their email address, and I'll send either or both of the books out to them. Oh, can I have one of those? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so that's great. So what we'll do is we'll give you contact information also with this um, so that people can, can get that. I'm sure a lot of people would love an ebook from you, definitely. So let's go back to mom. Mom's at home right now with her kids, um, six weeks of, you know, sort of shuttered at, at home with the kids. What would be some really good essential oils for kids, besides those that would just knock them out? There are a few moms that might like that right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, vetiver, actually, right? Vetiver knocks me out at the end of the night. Oh, I need it. I love vetiver. But no, something much, much simpler that would be good for them would be lavender, again, frankincense, uh, some lemon to uplift the mood, some peppermint again to uplift the mood. Um, I also think that having tea tree or melaleuca oil as it's known, frankincense and oregano, uh, those are my six top that I would tell a mom that I think that they need to have on hand at any time, but especially now. And Pam, what could they use those for? So when you say melaleuca, for example, or tea tree oil, what would they use the tea tree oil for? So tea tree oil is very good. It's antiseptic. It, it's good for cleaning. It's also good. I would use that if I have uh, some, some ear discomfort, things like that. Um, also, that can be used. It's good for, the, for, um, for a blemish. So things like that with melaleuca, the frankincense. That is, I would, I would put that on the base of the neck and on the shoulders. It's very, very calming. Um, and anytime that you use any of these oils, um, frankincense, as you know, is the king of oils and it can actually help whatever oil you're using. So if you're using lavender for calming and you add that, it'll just add to that degree of calm. I actually use a combination of lavender and frankincense. I'm, 
I'm cooking a lot. I love to cook. It's very therapeutic, but I have a very bad habit of burning myself. So I always keep lavender and frankincense around to apply to minor burns. It's amazing how quickly uh, they support that and, and help it to heal. Nice. So that says so there's some good choices there. And, you know, then we sort of get into blends and that's when it gets a little bit more sort of complicated. You, you sort of mentioned putting lavender and frankincense together as a really nice blend for, for herbs. But what would be some, some top blends? Is it just based on what you like to smell or are there some blends you can put together? And give us some examples, Pam, so people can put some stuff together of, of some blends that would be really useful to have. Sure. So actually there are five blends based on what your, you and your family's needs are. There are five different blends that are really good. So there's a protective blend that helps to uh, with the immune function and also contains cleansing properties so that you could use that to actually clean countertops uh, and, and hard surfaces. Um, as well as diffusing it or, or applying it topically or internally. Um, and that does have things like, uh, like clove and cassia in it. And what I can do is I can also provide to you uh, some, in writing it might be a little bit easier for everyone uh, because it is kind of dependent on how many drops so it gets a, a little bit involved. But then uh, a respiratory blend. Um, if, if you are having congestion, uh, to either diffuse or rub on the chest or apply to the nostrils or the bottoms of the feet. Uh, a digestive blend that you can take internally or you can rub on the belly. And I know that you, had, uh, you were going to ask me about a digestive blend and some of the things that are in the digestive blend are also the things that we use in Ayurveda, the fennel, the cardamom, the coriander, uh, those types of things. And then soothing blends, which would have things like sandalwood, lavender, some vetiver, maybe some ylang ylang in it. Um, a, there are other calming blends that you can use that will help to improve your sustained attention, which moms might really like right now with homeschooling their children. Um, but it also eases the body and mind while it actually is bringing the uh, attention forward. And I myself have been using that and have been noticing a real difference. Um, because it will be things that are soothing, but then it has like a pop of spearmint in it that really just helps you to focus so much. Well, that sounds really good. So, so yeah, if you can give me those, then I can include those with this so that people can actually sort of make up some stuff. But can you overuse oils? Um, I mean, could they overload your system? I mean, a, there's a fine line between sort of health and poison by using too much of one thing. Could you do the same thing with essential oils too? So any substance can become toxic if, if it's used in inappropriate doses, right? Even natural, seemingly harmless substances like water, minerals, or vitamins can become toxic if consumed in excess. So essential oils are safe to use as long as the appropriate dosages and application methods are observed. Um, less is always more with essential oils, especially in the beginning. It only takes one to two drops applied every four to six hours as needed. Um, in the blends, generally what we do with the blends is we are blending that with fractionated coconut oil. That's the most common. Um, if you want a warming oil, you could also use the sesame oil. It's, it's all in your preference. I also sometimes use jojoba oil or almond oil. So a very neutral oil, but fractionated coconut oil is, is generally most widely used. And so if you're making these blends and you're diluting them, you are not going in and putting like when, when you hear some of these, these oil blends, say I wanna put 10 drops of this and 20 drops of that and maybe three drops of that. But when it's blended with the fractionated coconut oil, 
you are only getting a very minute amount. And the best thing is that the fractionated coconut oil helps with the absorption into your skin. So it does not it does not diminish the effect of the essential oil. It actually allows it to have a longer, more sustained effect. So what are the, some of the best ways to boost immunity? And it's funny that you said that if you, you just use a few drops, it's not likely to overload the system because I was making up my immunity kits and I have an immune oil that you actually put on your chest. Um, and it's got, it's got maybe five or six different essential oils. And I was making up probably 50 of these kits. So a lot. At the end of the day, when I had made all these kits up, I was exhausted, not just because I've made up 50 kits, but I couldn't think straight. My, my brain was foggy and I just sort of crashed for the night. And I wake up the next day. It's like, I think I, I think I ever did the essential oils. I think it's just like <laughs> one too many. So they can have that effect. But that was my immune oil. But what would be some great things to boost immunity, especially that that's pretty sort of uh, current right now? Right. So there are probably my top, I mean, I have 16 top heavy hitters as far as immunity boosting oils. Things like Arbor Vitae, Cassia, Black Pepper, Cinnamon Bark, Clove, Copa Iba, Frankincense, Cardamom, Eucalyptus, Lemon, Rosemary, Oregano, the Tea Tree or Melaleuca, however you like to call it, uh, thyme, turmeric, and wild orange. These, these are the heavy hitters, and you can use them in different combinations. I do have a veggie capsule that I put uh, a mixture of the protective blend in, which is a combination of things, and then I add to that melaleuca, I add some frankincense, I add some oregano, those were, those were the originals, and actually during the, this pandemic that we're going through, so my husband actually was COVID-19 positive, and, and he did need to go to the hospital and be hospitalized at a certain point, uh, but we did use the essential oils, and I did use the essential oils, and had been using them previously. Um, I... I was sleeping with him in the same bed for over a week before he went to the hospital. I'm not saying that the essential oils kept me from having COVID-19, but I just went for an antibody test and I do not have the antibodies, so I was not infected with it. Um, I do know that. And what I was adding to my regular was also Melissa, which I didn't mention on there, and the time. So you can change them around. You don't necessarily need to be taking the same thing every day. I was using a lot of essential oils at that point, I have to tell you, because I do have protocols that, uh, that I use um, and I pl apply it to the shoulders and to the back and inhale and put it on the bottom of the feet. And some of those can have up to 12 different essential oils that I'm using. Um, but I do use the fractionated coconut oil to have that on my back so that it is diluting them also. You know, I, I think, Pam, I mean, that's amazing that you can sort of be with your husband all this time and he comes down with COVID-19 to the point where he gets hospitalized and you don't even, you know, show up with antibodies. Um, you know, that, 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 that must have been a scary time for you as well. But it, it's pretty amazing that you did not get infected as well. So... Yeah, it is amazing. Some good stuff. And, and I have to say that if I hadn't been into natural solutions, if I hadn't been connected with people in essential oils and people like you, I was talking to them as this was going on and, because I really did not have time to be going online and reading things. Uh, I was really just trying to take care of matters at hand. And they were wonderful. And while it isn't an essential oil or an herb or something that my husband ingested, because of the people that I've associated with, I was 
I was recommended to buy a pulse oximeter for my husband. And my husband just came home on Saturday. He's healthy now. And he was actually out playing golf because we're, we're allowed to play golf now. And he was with his friends and he came home and he said to me, I told them all that you saved my life. I told them all that you saved my life because you do the research and you, you take, you took care of me and you found out about the pulse oximeter and you found out about the oxygen levels. And if you hadn't done all of these things, I would never have gone to the emergency room when I needed to. And we really did. We went right when he needed to, not when he was just feeling a little ill, but right at the point where it was things that I couldn't provide when he needed uh, additional oxygen, when he needed uh, additional hydration, those, those were the things that we went for. So I, I really credit it to the fact that I have this interest and desire to try to address things naturally. That's tremendous. Yeah, that's quite a testament to how you're living. That, that it worked out that way for you. Can you share a favorite blend with us? Um, I mean, if you don't mind me sort of sharing, Pamela, that you are actually a, a pitta kapha or kapha pitta. We can say it either way. We're in kapha season right now. So that's that sense of sort of heaviness and sluggishness which you can, which you can feel um, this time of year. Um, what, what's a blend that you might use that can help sort of lighten and brighten you up? So the first one that for the for the kapha side is a mid afternoon slump buster, okay. uh, and it is for kapha's heaviness. Uh, and I use this to when that heaviness is getting the better of me. And it's this one's very simple. You would get a fifteen milliliter roller bottle and put in fifteen drops of peppermint and twenty drops of wild orange and then fill the remainder with the fractionated coconut oil. And then you can apply that to the back of your neck, rub on the base of your skull, uh, swipe it across your forehead near your hairline, inhale it. You could also just use three drops of the peppermint and four drops of the wild orange with water in a diffuser and use it aromatically. That sounds nice. What about the pitta in you that can get fired up at times? Yeah, so sometimes we need to reduce the intensity, especially at the end of the day. So I have a peace and calm blend that's very nice. It is a little bit more uh, involved. You would combine 10 drops of lavender, 20 drops of that vetiver, <laughs> two drops of uh, each of cedar wood, Hawaiian sandalwood, Roman chamomile and ylang ylang in a 10 mil roller bottle and then top it off with fractionated coconut oil. And with that, I would apply it to the bottoms of my feet and my neck. Now, the other thing that you could do would be to, again, in a diffuser, take three drops of lavender, five drops of vetiver and a drop of each of the other essential oils. That sounds really nice. I like that, that, that one sounds, I like vetiver because it reminds me of walking through a sort of a forest, a, a cool forest um, in the mid-afternoon. So I love that smell. So that seems really calm and cooling to me. Um, Pam, I, I want to thank you for your time. I don't want to take up too much time. I know how busy you are and I love the picture of Pittsburgh behind you. Um, but this is actually my, 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 what I look at. This is my living room uh, background. No, it's not. It's your Zoom background, isn't it? It is a picture of from that I took from my window in my living room. Oh, wonderful. What I am I am in the little second bedroom of my condo because my husband is also working from home. So I have deferred to him to allow him to be at the dining room table. But what I realized is that when I do sit at the dining room table, oftentimes there's just a, a whitish background. So I wanted people to really be able to see Pittsburgh. And so I took a picture on my phone out, my, out of my window and just used it as a backdrop. Oh, that's tremendous. I love it, Pam. It's, it's great. 
Um, so Pam, when, when people want to sort of know more about essential oils, especially some blends um, that, that, that may be more personalized to them and less sort of just generic. And I love the fact that you're going to share some and, and I'll get those out to everybody. But how can people get a hold of you, love? So the, probably the best way is to call or text me. A text is great. My phone number is 412-215-5717. And if they would just text me and give me their name and their email address, again, I can send one or both of those eBooks to them. And I would also be very willing to provide a one-on-one -on -one wellness consult with them. Yeah, that's really nice looking at essential oils. I love that. So Pam, it was great talking to you. It always is. So uh, have a really enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for sharing all this information with you. It's really valuable. And uh, I'll touch base with you again soon. Okay, thank you so much for the opportunity, Carrie. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Pam.